Hello and welcome to the New Indian Express Online. I'm Bansi Karpa. With me is political analyst Mr. P.S. Murthy. We're going to be talking about the run-up to the four Rajya Sabha seats which are up for grabs, the elections which will be held on 27th of February. In fact, there are four independent candidates, Putswami Gaurav, Darshan Putunaya, Lata Malikarjun and uh, G. Janathan Reddy. Each one of them is an MLA representing different constituencies. Uh, first of all, you know, everything depends on the choice or the way these four independents vote. So, uh, as an analyst, how would you really look at them? Because uh, each one has a personality and none of them belong to any party. None of them are mainstream, uh, you know, from any mainstream party. All are independent. So, how do you see them voting? Just, just take a fundamental example to start with Darshan Kutatiya. All his life, they fought JDS. His father fought JDS, Darshan Kutatiya fought JDS. In this current uh, assembly election, which he won last few months back, he won the support of Congress. And there are, under no circumstances, Darshan Kutatiya will be able to give his vote to the JDS campaign. That essentially means end of his political career. Period. That At is not ground zero. At At ground zero. It is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. It will be difficult for him after voting for JDS to go to Melukote and face his. I think it's uh, a story is over. It's in a scenario that as we assume that presume that there's a Putin who votes for the JDS candidate. Mm -hmm. I think politically he's finished, okay. which is not going to happen. Now how about the other three? We still have Putswami Gowda. We have Gautam Malikarjun. We have G. Janardhan Reddy. Uh, Swami Goda uh, initiated as a Congress rebel and won. He is a part and parcel of the party and has a strong relationship with uh, one of the Congress MLAs from Muskote, Padakla. His brother is also tipped to be a Lok Sabha candidate for the Mandya seat currently. So, after no possibility is that you know, he would go with the JDS at this moment. It looks like it is not going to happen. That's what is the thinking in the Congress. Yeah. Lata Malikarjun is, uh, is also quite a strong political family she comes from. Lata Malikarjun initiated uh, uh, our ticket discussions with the Congress initially for the elections. It happened. Contested as an independent and won. Uh, she is the associate member of the Congress party. And likely that her political future is tied to the Congress party, the constituency. And her father, Rupi Prakash, uh, his last position in the party was with the Congress party. So I don't foresee the possibility of Okay. How about Janardhan Reddy? He is someone who is won as an independent. He was earlier in the Bharatiya Janata Party. Do you think he has any love for the Bharatiya Janata Party? Do you think he will make a difference there? I think Janardhan Reddy, Kali Janardhan Reddy for Bharatiya Janata Party would have been a different thing. But asking his own for the JDS candidate, which he has a personal not so good equation with H.D. Kumar Swami. And uh, looks like I mean, the saying is also that he has met uh, the KPCC president twice in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Looks like even that vote is not coming to JDS. Okay. Now, how different are these elections, Rajya Sabha elections? Because we have seen so many Rajya Sabha elections in the past. But this looks like a fight to the finish. I mean, it's, it's almost like a nail biting finish. It's like a T20 match, really. So, how different are these if you compare it to the regular Rajya Sabha elections? If it was a, it should have been a very regular Rajya Sabha election. Without any of these events, without any of these excitements or any nail biting finish, I think the drama has been brought in here for the JDS in that way. Knowing clearly when they don't have the votes, they are, they are, I don't know under what confidence JDS took this decision. If this was a winnable seat, I think BJP would have fought for the seat, not allowed JDS to fight there. Absolutely. And, and then, uh, you know, some have said that this is unparliamentary because JDS is just having 19 votes depend on. Alright, they get BJP support, there is still only 21 votes. So, where are the other 5 votes coming from? So, you know, some have said this is unparliamentary, that, uh, you know, th this is not done in a democracy, but we will leave those questions for now. How can JDS, uh, you know, with just 19 seats, put up a candidate? Because th this is still a very important question. Uh, I mean, I mean my, my thought process is that maybe JDS made an offer the BJP, BJP would not have put up their candidate. Even with JDS pro promising the support, BJP would not have said, put up the candidate until unless there was a surety of a win. I think this was an offer from the JDS uh, to work around the equation of, number of the votes. And maybe if JDS wins this, 
there is also a perception boost for JDS in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, which is just about three to four weeks away. On the contrary, if this doesn't work, as we don't see the numbers for the JDS, we don't see those five votes. Where so, but we don't know. Is. But we don't know. No, but we okay. don't see them on, on the table. It's not there. At the moment. Okay. So, also some analysts uh, have said that if this was a sure seat for JDS. They would not have put Kupendra Reddy, they, have, they would have put someone else. So how would you like to answer? Because this Kupendra Reddy's third time he is being pushed into such a scenario by the JDS and uh, twice he's lost already. He, he seems to be the permanent fall guy for the JDS. Uh, under what circumstances, whenever JDS gets into such circumstances, I think they always look up to Kupendra Reddy. The reason is best known to them. I think this is the third time uh, such an attempt has been made. First ever, this is the third, third time that one has come in on the similar days with a clarity of no victory, with a very clear clarity of a loss. Um, only JDS has to answer if they were a winning seat, it would have not got to open the it would have gone to somebody else. Somebody else. Like somebody. Somebody. Some were saying even Dr. Manjunan could have been. Manjunan been an ideal scenario. I think Absolutely. he would have allowed to take the seat. Sarcastically, Rather people have said Dr. Manjunan could have been a better choice. Better choice. Uh, now, my next question to you is, just a few days ago, maybe about a week, a little over a week ago, the Legislative Council elections were held and there was a big setback to the JDS-BJP combined because that was a seat where Congress had failed miserably in the previous election. They got just about, uh, you know, 600 votes. So this time, the Congress won and very interestingly, it was a JDS uh, turncoat who held the congressman. So how do you look at that? See, that was a typical seat which Congress had no hopes of winning. It didn't happen earlier. The combined effort or the cadre or the votes of JDS and BJP were phenomenally high. JDS also had a good candidate who was also going to last election earlier. So there was also some kind of a sympathy factor was also in their favor. But surprisingly, I think everything turned around in Putana coming as a Congress candidate. That was their first perception loss as a partnership within one month of their partnership going live in the state of Karnataka. This one, Tuesday, the next 27 February, is going to be the second attempt on part of the partnership to make it work together. If both the, both the scenarios go anti-JDS and BJP, it would be a huge perception loss for the partnership. Within weeks, they are going to get into the Lok Sabha elections. I wonder why such a decision itself was taken on part of the JDS to contest this election. Okay, so in, in, from what you are saying, this general election, just round the corner, if JDS and BJP lose this Rajya Sabha seat, it will be a perception loss for both of them, with with virtually back-to-back -back defeats after the legislative council exactly. of this other great defeat. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the entire narrative goes to the Congress, which very clearly says that, you know what, this is not a partnership that is working. Absolutely. It also has a potential to create fissures on the ground between the cables of BJP and JDS. Absolutely. Because the, the relationship is not starting with trust, Absolutely. it is starting with two back to back defeats. Absolutely. Also, on, on this issue of Bharti Janta Party, uh, you know, uh, is, is everything well? Because Congress is moving its legislators into a safe uh, resort. And some say that uh, the other two are also taking all the necessary precautions. Do you think there could be cross voting? Now, this is a big, big uh, challenge that any party faces. Earlier, this was not so bad, but we saw the previous government in Karnataka went because 17 of them, you know, uh, changed their life, you know, moved to another party. So, I won't go into the details. Do you think there is a risk of cross voting in the Bharti Janta Party also? Because it's like a fortress. Exactly. exactly. See, cross voting scenario chances get higher when you when you are almost going to the assembly elections. We just had the assembly elections eight, ten months back. So, possibility of somebody wanting to lose their membership, wanting to lose their party affiliation is very rare. If there is a possibility of a cross vote from the Congress, there is also a possibility of a cross vote from the BJP. BJP, part of the BJP is full of Congress turn votes. So, even the possibility of cross voting on that side is also equally true when it is a possibility on this side. Absolutely. So, we come to the very, very end of this program. There is a huge risk of cross-voting in all the parties and all of them taking that necessary precaution. Congress will move its legislators soon after the uh, legislature into a safe house that is uh, 
Hotel Hilton, which is which is like a resort, and they will bring them and ensure that the last congressman votes. And this time, let's remember that each one of them will be showing the ballot paper uh, to their party official before they cast the vote. But not so for the independents, because the independents under the rule will not have to show their ballot papers to anybody. So how will the independents vote? There are four of them. So the race really wide open, really, because none of us know really which way the election will go, who and uh, who will really be the winner. Thank you for watching.